Hey class, we're back with the Causes of the American Revolution. We're actually talking about the first battle of the American Revolution today, or the first two battles. Uh, the Battle of Lexington and Concord. Uh, they're two separate battles, but but we, they lump them together because it happened like one right after the other. So uh, Battle of Lexington is where it first happened. That's where the first shot was fired. It was the shot heard around the world. And uh, it wasn't really much of a battle because there weren't many uh, colonists, militia there against a much bigger British army. And, uh, you know, they killed some of them. Some of them ran off and uh, they, they headed to Concord, which was the really big battle and one that, that the, the colonists won. So that's what we're talking about today, Battle of Lexington and Concord, which was the very first battles in the American Revolution. Uh, battles of Lexington and Concord, it signaled the start of the American Revolutionary War on April 19th, 1775. This was right after Paul Revere's ride. All right, uh, the British Army set out from Boston to capture rebel leaders Samuel Adams and John Hancock. In Lexington, in Lexington, and they also wanted to destroy their ammunition store of weapons, all right, in Concord. And uh, they were warned by the colonists. The colonists were warned by, by Paul Revere, so they were kind of ready for this. And uh, that, that, that was the very, it signaled the very start of the American Revolutionary War, and it's an important battle because of that. Battle of Lexington and Concord. The battles of Lexington and Concord signaled the start of the American Revolutionary War on April 19, 1775. The British Army set out from Boston to capture rebel leaders Samuel Adams and John Hancock in Lexington, as well as to destroy the American store of weapons and ammunition in Concord. All right. Paul Revere's ride. Like I said, the colonists were warned, however, by riders including Paul Revere and, and uh, William Dowd, that the, the British Army was approaching, all right? Sam Adams and John Hancock managed to escape, and uh, the local militia was able to hide a lot of their ammunition and their weapons because they came to Concord looking for those weapons, all right? And they didn't find anything, uh, but they were ready for them and, and waiting for them uh, as more militia men gathered and gathered and gathered. Uh, waiting for them across the bridge and we'll get to that in just a minute i'm getting a little ahead of myself because i like talking about it about this this is one of my favorites so uh paul revere's midnight ride was very important and instrumental in preparing the colonists though paul revere's ride the colonists were warned however by riders including paul revere that the british army was approaching sam adams and john hancock were able to escape the local militia was able to hide much of their ammunition and weapons all right, the Battle of Lexington, it was a very, very small fight. Like I said, you, you really wouldn't call it a battle. All right? the, the militia were outnumbered by a much larger British army. And, uh, but it's important because it is where the Revolutionary War started. Uh, the British got there. There was only around 80 American militiamen in the town. All right, they had a lot more, a lot more people, okay? And they were led by Captain John Parker, all right, that from uh, the militia were. And the, uh, the British were led by Major John Pitcairn. All right, and, and they didn't expect actually to fight. But in the midst of confusion, somebody shot. The first gunshot of the war went off. And it, it shot and it forced the British to attack. So some of the colonists were killed and the rest fled. And nobody knows who shot that first shot. That's the thing about it. Nobody knows if it was Britain or if it was the American colonists. That, that shot that first shot. Battle fired that first shot. The Battle of Lexington was a very small fight. You could hardly call it a battle, but it's important because it's where the Revolutionary War started. When the British arrived, there were only around 80 American militiamen in the town. They were led by Captain John Parker. They were up against a much larger British force led by Major John Pitcairn. Neither side expected to actually fight. But in the midst of the confusion, a gunshot went off, forcing the British to attack. Some of the colonists were killed and the rest fled. All right. And it was, the gunshot was the first shot of the American Revolution. It was the start of the war. And it was called The Shot Heard Round the World uh, by Ralph Waldo Emerson in his poem. 
All right. And uh, like I said, no one is actually sure. No one knows who fired that first shot. They don't know. Uh, if you're looking for more stuff on this, watch, watch the Sons of Liberty. All right. It's a, it's a unlimited series about, about the beginning of the war and things that led up to the war. Everything we've talked about in here, they, they cover in, in that. And, it, and it's pretty accurate. So, uh, but yeah, it was the, it was the shot heard around the world. No one's actually sure who fired the first shot, or if it's an American or British soldier. Uh, but it was the very first shot in the war. In the war, and it is important in the Battle of Lexington. It's important because of that. Shot heard around the world. The gunshot was the first shot of the American Revolution, and the start of the war. It was called the shot heard around the world by Ralph Waldo, Waldo Emerson in his poem Concord Hymn. No one's actually sure who fired the first shot or if it was an American or a British soldier. All right. So the, they go on to the Battle of Concord. The ones that made it through Lexington went on to Concord. The British went on to Concord. They were looking for the the store of ammunition and stuff, all right? They marched to the city of Concord. When they first got to Concord, they didn't have a lot, whole lot of resistance. They began to search the town for the militia's hidden stash of weapons, but they didn't find nothing, all right? All these Americans had retreated to the outskirts of Concord, and they just watched the British from the other side. And the Americans waited. More and more militiamen came. Remember, Paul Revere had gone through, and they'd had other riders go out and tell people that they were coming. So the local militia, the militias from around the area had come to here too, all right? So they got more and more militiamen, and, and their forces got stronger and stronger. Battle of Concord. After the Americans fled from Lexington, the British marched to the city of Concord. When they first got to Concord, they met little resistance and began to search the town for the militia's hidden stash of weapons and munitions. The Americans had retreated to the outskirts of Concord and observed the British from the other side of the North Bridge. As the Americans waited, more and more local militiamen arrived, making their forces stronger and stronger. All right. So the Americans said, hey, we're going to cross the bridge back into Concord. And when they did, they defeated the British troops at the North Bridge and it gave the Americans renewed confidence, all right? Uh, like I said, they, their, their army had grown, their forces had grown, so they were prepared for this fight at Concord. They weren't really so much at Lexington because there was only 80 of them. So uh, uh, the British commander, Colonel Fran Francis Smith, realized that the American militia Resistance it was growing and it was time to retreat. So he called a retreat, which means they 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 left. They retreated. Crossing the bridge, the Americans decided to cross the North Bridge back into Concord. They defeated the British troops at the North Bridge, giving the Americans renewed confidence. Soon, the British commander, Colonel Francis Smith, realized that the American militia resistance was rapidly growing, and it was time to retreat. All right. So during the British retreat. The, the Americans didn't stop there. Okay? They didn't just let them retreat peacefully, which I love, by the way. Okay, uh, They began a long march back to the city, and the Americans continued to gain force, and they continued to attack them on their way, all the way from Concord back to Boston. All right, And by the time it reached Boston, the British had lost 73 men, and 174 were wounded, while the Americans had only lost 49 men, and, 49, and 41 were wounded. So... It was a big, big victory for the Americans. Like I said, it gave them confidence. It gave them hope. Hey, we can beat, we can defeat them. We can do this. So, uh, but yeah, I love it because they, they retreated all the way back. They kept attacking them, okay? And that, that's how angry they were and how upset they were with Britain. And uh, they just, they saw opportunity and they took it. The British retreat. Once the British decided to retreat, they began the long march back to the city of Boston. The Americans continued to gain forces and continued to attack and harass the British during their retreat. By the time the British reached Boston, they had lost 73 men and 174 more were wounded. The Americans lost 49 men and 49, 41 were wounded. All right. So the war has begun. After this, this was the first battles of the war. With these battles, the American Revolution had officially begun. All right. Shots had been fired, thousand militiamen surrounded Boston. Oh yeah, they pushed them all the way back to Boston and they surrounded Boston. And they felt they'd pushed the British back, giving them courage to continue to unite and fight. And uh, we will talk more. This was our last one for the causes of the American Revolution. We will talk more in detail about the war of the American Revolution 
uh, over the next few weeks. And uh, like I said, this is my favorite thing to teach. So The war has begun. With these battles, the American Revolution had officially begun. Shots had been fired. Thousands of militiamen surrounded Boston. The Americans felt they had pushed back the British had given them courage to continue to unite and fight. All right, comprehension questions. What battle signaled the start of the American Revolution? Was it A, the battles of Lexington and Concord, B, the Boston Massacre, or C, the French and Indian War? It was A, the battles of Lexington and Concord. That is the battle, that is who we talked about today. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Number two, who warned the colonists the British were coming? We just talked about this. Mr. Sean, A, Mr. Sean, B, Paul Revere, or C, John Hancock and Samuel Adams? It is B, Paul Revere. Paul Revere and William Dale, as they made their ride. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Yeah, and the British are coming or the Redcoats are coming. And three, which battle was fought first on that day? There were two battles on that day. One was really small. You wouldn't really call it much of a battle. And one was a big battle that the Americans won. Uh, was it? So which one was first? A, the Battle of Concord, B, Metacomet, or C, the Battle of Lexington? It was C, the Battle of Lexington was the first one fought. That's where the first shot was fired. Shot heard around the world. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Number four, what was the first shot in the war called? I just answered this. A, the shot heard around the world, B, loud, or C, shot through the heart? It was called A, the shot heard around the world in Ralph Waldo Emerson's poem, Concord Hymn. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Number five, what did the Americans cross in Concord? What did they cross? A, they crossed Mr. Sean. B, they, the Americans were crossing the North Bridge. Or C, nothing. They crossed the North Bridge to, to begin the attack in Concord as more and more militiamen came in and their forces grew. Number six, what did the British do at the end of the Battle of Concord? A, they retreated, B, they surrendered, or C, they hid? The answer is A, they retreated all the way back to Boston because they, they were getting beat. They were losing men, and uh, the Colonel Francis uh, saw that, and he retreated. And when I say retreat, that means they left. So uh, they didn't want to fight anymore. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. And that is our last one for this. All right, be sure you go on Schoology and you uh, turn it in on Schoology so you get credit for it. And uh, next time I, you see me, we will be talking about the American Revolution, no longer the causes of the American Revolution, but the actual American Revolution uh, for the next few weeks. And uh, I, I hope you all have a good day and uh, I'll see you then.